Hi everyone, I'm Denise Gagne and I'm here today to share some ideas for holiday ORF arrangements. What that are already created for you and ways you can create your own with the help of your students. So we love to see your faces during the session and we don't see you in this webinar format unless we make you a, a, a panelist. So raise your hand like that, just click the raise hand if you would like to be um, a panelist and let us see your faces. Hi Linda, so nice to see you again this week. And um, no, we, we love to see our teachers. It's really, um, really helpful for us. So I thought I would start today with the song list and what is available for ORF arrangements in the song list. And then I would go to the units. But I also want to highlight some things about teaching the ORF instruments. Uh, I'll actually maybe at a basic level. So I have these ORF notes for the website. And this was written and put on the old site and we haven't ha found a home for it yet on the new site. Uh, but I think what we're going to do, we're going to create an ORF section in instruments and then add this material to it because it's really, really good material. So this is Judy Sills um, notes and Judy taught level three ORF and she taught actually in Edmonton. She taught in Atlanta for years and years. She's retired now, um, but she's really a wonderful ORF educator. And basically she says here, the beauty of the ORF approach is that it's based on community. So it's not just me taking a score of music in front, conducting it and wanting my kids to do what I'm conducting. It's really taking a piece of music and facilitating the students in creating an arrangement that's satisfying to them, satisfying to me and hopefully satisfying to an audience as well. So she has some notes here. Number one is that everything's taught to everybody. So if you have six parts in an ORF arrangement, you teach them one at a time and you teach them to everyone in the class. And usually I'll teach that with body percussion. Sometimes I'll teach it with movement. You present the song in its totality. So me with my croaky voice, I'm not gonna be doing much singing, but I can play it for them. You teach the melody on a neutral syllable. And again, because I'm handicapped with my voice not working, I might play that on a recorder or play it on my ORF instrument. You repeat it phrase by phrase until they have the whole melody. Then you teach the words until they're successful. And our experienced ORF teachers know this without saying. But we have lots of teachers that are new to the process and haven't yet taken levels courses. And so going through this is a good thing. So add accompaniment parts one at a time, beginning with the base. The base is the fundamental part for all of the arrangements. So I always teach the base part first. And that's, uh, that's Judy's suggestion. I 100% agree. Each part learned by everyone. Often um, a teacher will create a speech pattern using a rhythm that will be used to help kids hold on to the part. Will you be my friend? And you use those words to help the kids lock in and remember the, the rhythm. The word rhythms are very helpful. Um, you could also do it with body percussion. If I'm doing a level bordoon where I'm doing the basses do something and then the altos do something. I'll teach the bass part here. I'll teach the alto part here, then transfer to the instruments. Create movements and usually again, try and do that with the student input if appropriate. And you can find opportunities for movement in almost every piece of music. And then always remember, allow opportunities for creative input from the kids. They might create an introduction on the ORF instruments. If you're doing something in the key of C, take off the burgers and the fries, the Bs and the Fs, and let them improvise as a B section. So the songs and the orchestrations are only a basis to provide each teacher with a framework. And from that framework, every teacher is gonna go off in a little bit different direction. And it's really, um, I, I love seeing the different ways teachers have used the ORF arrangements we have in 
the program. One of the songs I'm going to use today is Falling Leaves, and I've been sent two different performances of that piece in the last couple of weeks, and they're very different, and they're both very good. So this is a starting point, and from here, you make it work. So this will be in the ORF um, section so that you can go through, and I'll take you through one of our Christmas ones instead of this one. I wanted to mention ORF training, orfcanada.ca for people in Canada. Check out where the levels courses are being held. There was levels courses live and in person already in the United States last summer. And you can find where levels courses are close to you by going to aosa.org. In Australia, it's ancoast.org.au. But really, I don't think I truly understood ORF process until I had finished my level two training. My level one training gave me a taste of it and I had some ideas, but I really understood it much better after my level two and Jay Broker for my level three was incredible. Another thing that I sometimes get emails from teachers SG or AG. So these refer to the different sizes of instruments. So S stands for soprano and the G stands for glockenspiel. And the glockenspiel is the smallest of the ORF instruments. I have my little colored one here that only has one octave. Typically ORF glockenspiels will go from middle C up to high A and it sounds an octave higher than it's written. And then we have um, an alto glockenspiel. So this instrument I have here is a soprano metallophone. So the abbreviation for is SM, soprano metallophone. If I had the same thing with wooden bars, it would be a xylophone and the abbreviation for that would be SX for soprano xylophone. And then the size that's a little bit bigger and sounds a little bit deeper is the altos. And so AX alto xylophone, AM alto metallophone. And then the bases are beautiful and much bigger. Nice if you can have buckets or something for the kids to sit on while they're playing xylophone so they don't have to kneel on the floor. And if you have a really, really great budget, you can sometimes get contrabass bars. And those add a real resonance to the sound if you can get your hands on budget. So the ORF directory was on the old site. On the new site, we can filter for ORF arrangements. So I'm going to music play online and I'm going to go to the song list and I'm going to add a filter. And what I'm gonna add here And I'm going to okay, select from this option, ORF. And once I've done that, I've got all my ORF arrangements for every grade. Now I can filter by grade level. So if I look at pre-K, the song that I would use in a holiday concert is the song Frosty Weather. And I'll let you hear it, it's lovely. It's a simple, simple little song. in there but for little people I'm just going to do the D and the A Bordune where that song is quite lovely is um, 
you can make up movement with it. And so the kids demo is here with me making up some circle, a little circle dance movement to it. But there is a book called Millions of Snowflakes. And I'm looking for my millions of snowflakes. I must have it open already. So we'll go to my PDFs. There's my millions of snowflakes. Um, this is a poor copy of it. Um, I have to actually get my hands on the real book. This is screenshots, I think, from YouTube. Uh, so I need to get rid of that little toolbar that's showing up. One little snowflake falls on my nose. It makes me shiver from my head to my toes. And then the kids would sing, frosty weather, snowy weather, when the wind blows, we all go together. Read the next part of the book. Two little snowflakes get in my eyes, blink, blink, what a surprise. And then we would sing again. Now, if you're little people, are hitting a whole bunch of wrong notes. The beautiful part of these ORF instruments is that you can take bars up. Hand above, hand below. Lift the bar, that's how you know. So you lift them straight up. And now you can see I only have the two notes, the D and the A, that I want my little pre-case to play. So then they'll play D and A, and we'll sing. Frosty weather, snowy weather, when the wind blows, we all go together. So, and then I could keep going with my story. Three little snowflakes melt on my tongue. Frosty weather, snowy weather, Five, four little snowflakes tickle. Oh, that there was a page wrong. Melt on my tongue. I eat them up. Yum, 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 yum. My pages are mixed up. Five little, four little snowflakes tickle my chin. I laugh. I jump. I run. I spin. Lots of movement possibilities here in this storybook as well. And then we would sing. Frosty weather, snowy weather, when the wind blows, we all go together. I stop and I put out my hand. Five little snowflakes softly land. Snow on the house, snow on the tree, snow on the ground, snow on me. And you would sing again. Lots of snowflakes in my hair. Snowflakes falling everywhere. It's frosty weather. So it's a great little uh, book to do with your students as a classroom activity or as a, I'm going to close all tabs, or as a concert piece. I've seen this done in a concert as part of a concert. And then the teacher did, I made a snowman from pre-K as their second piece for it. So that is a great song from pre-K. From kinder, I'll go back to my search and remember I've selected directory and I've selected the ORF arrangements. So now I'm going to unfilter pre-K and I'm going to filter kinder and then I can see all the places in kindergarten, music play for kindergarten, where I can add simple board dunes because I'm not doing full arrangements with our kinders. So the song that I want to highlight here is One Little Candle. And this is a song for Hanukkah. And Hanukkah started, I believe, three days ago. So it's the perfect time of year to be teaching the Hanukkah song. So let's pull this up and have a listen. And what I'm going to suggest is that we add finger symbols on the numbers. One little candle burn, burn, burn. Hanukkah is here. One little candle. So every time there's a number, a finger symbol. And I might do it with this 
and then on burn, 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 I'm going to do a different instrument. It might be a shaker, burn, 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 um, but I don't think I can do two at the same time. So I'm going to just do my one and my burn, burn, burn on here. And I can do something different for Hanukkah is here. So let's see what we can add to this. If you have an instrument with you, play along. Even better. going to do the whole song because it is repetitive. Um, repetitive is good for little people, but what you need to do is to find ways to make variety between the repetitions. So one way I've done it with this particular song is to have the kids have um, finger lights or tea lights. The little tea lights, you can turn them on and then the kids cover the tea light with their hands and when they open up, that light shows. So when you sing, one little candle, burn, 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 the first one would take their hand off. If you're using finger lights, one little candle, burn, 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 and they would stay on. And then when we have two little candles, a second one lights up. Three little candles, a third one lights up. Um, another way I've seen this performed that added some really nice variety was to, um, to uh, have solos. So you'd have one child sing, one little candle, and then the class would come in, burn, burn, burn. The class would sing, Hanukkah is here. Soloist, one little candle, burn, burn, burn. Class, Hanukkah is here. So a nice little Hanukkah piece that you can do with your kids. So that's one little candle. I'm going to go back to my screen sharing and I'm going to go to grade one and in grade one the song that I know already I'm looking for is uh, ho 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 look at Santa go so now I'm filtered by directory by ORF and I'm going to change the grade level so I can see my grade one ORF arrangements Starting in grade one, these won't be just for June, so they'll be full arrangements, but simplify as needed for your own students. If your students aren't ready to go on to a full arrangement, just teach the Bordeaux or just teach the bass part. So I am looking for ho, 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 look at Santa go. And everyone will recognize this because it is um, bow, wow, wow. Whose dog art thou with Christmas words made up by Noreen Kester? do the same game that we do with Bow Wow Wow. So the game is one that's lots of fun. The kids really like it. Look at Santa go, bringing toys for girls and boys. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho. I love it. They see Look their friends. I love seeing these here, Calder, um, is now a barista at Starbucks. 
the video has been here for a while. So the kids love the game and they enjoy the song and there's a lovely ORF arrangement here. This ORF arrangement is one that I probably would simplify for grade one because I am thinking that one of these parts, well, maybe, depends how much experience your kids have had. If you've had Bordunes with them in pre-K and K, grade one comes, they might be ready. So this is one where I'd teach the basics I would teach it to everybody. So looking at the base part, I would teach it this way around. So that when they go to the instruments, they are playing the way that my hands have moved. So I mirror for them the part. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, and then they would go to the instruments and they would put that on. When they have one part and can sing and play at the same time, then I would tackle a second part. And sometimes one part's as far as you get with them. But this is, again, a cute little arrangement. And <clears throat> we've got the game directions in the arrangement as well. Now, for creating ideas, if I go to the beaten interact for this particular song and I go to create word rhythm pattern I have the words Santa toys and I can make up um, a word rhythm pattern with that so let's try Santa 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 toys uh, what, what do I want next toys toys Santa toys and I would get the, the students to help me pick out what instruments to play. I brought in my um, triangles today. Uh, you can see the problem with the actual paid for triangle holder. This thing's twisting like this. As soon as I pick it up, it makes it really hard. However, this one is a pipe cleaner and it still has triangle beater a nice sound it's way easier than the twisty one so get rid of your original triangle holders and just attach them with pipe cleaners so I want to do toys on my triangle and Santa I'm going to tap on my table here and I have to do that because I've only got one hand. So, Santa, 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 toys, 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 Santa, toys. Do you like it that way? You can chime in, Linda. If you want me to try something else, we'll try something else. Let's try Santa on a shaker and I'll do toys tapping on my table. Santa, 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 toys, 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 Santa, toys. Which way do you like? Do you like it better one way or the other? Um, we could try body percussion. Let's clap the Santa and pat the toys. Let's do it together. One, two, here we go. Santa, 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 toys, toys, toys. Santa toys. I might even try, uh, let's stop Santa and clap toys and try that. Let's see how that works. Here we go. Santa, Santa, Santa toys, 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 Santa toys. So encourage the kids to explore as many ways as you can. Doing it like that. And then what you do is you go to down here to the beaten rhythm printables. And I think it is right here. I have a printable version of the word rhythms. So I can copy this onto cardstock, cut it out, and I can give it to each of the kids. So now I can take my Santa toys and I can make my own word rhythm pattern with it. I'll do it so that you can, can you see that? Or is it better that way? 
Santa toys. Toys, toys. Santa, Santa, Santa. Toys. So every child in your class can make up their own word rhythm pattern or groups of two or three students or maybe four students can make up their own word rhythm patterns and you could do ho 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 look at santa go as your theme and then santa toys 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 as an a as a b section sing again as your a and then another students as a C section, and you keep going until everybody in the class has had a chance to perform. Um, grade one, groups of two have worked well for me. Groups of three, mm, um, and I don't go to big groups with first graders. But I really do like this activity, and every reading song in the program has it. So if you're looking for a, a nice holiday-themed lesson, um, the I Like You is probably a really good choice for you to do. So that's grade one. I'm going to share screen again. And I'm going to go into grade two. And I've done some rewriting for grade two. So in grade two, or back to my search, take off grade one, select grade two. I have the song, uh, Ring the Bells. Ring, ring, ring the bells, ring them loud and clear. And that's um, just a simple song to add non-pitched instruments to. Tell the children everywhere that Christmas time is near. So that is number 43. But my idea for using um, an actual ORF arrangement would be to go back to Falling Leaves it's beautiful. I've seen beautiful performances of it. Um, if I showed you this, I believe this one has um, ORF instruments in it. Let's have a look and see what they did. So in the handout for the session, I've made up some new words and I did this quickly and so they may not be very beautiful, but my new words are soft and fluffy white, falling in the night, winter snow is falling in the starry night. Actually, I think I wanted that to be light. Denae, I'm going to change that. There. Editing as we go. So, um, if that works for you, you could do it. The scarf movement is lovely. Um, I think you could use plates to represent snowflakes or even just have the kids moving with their hands. And that would work as a nice little ORF arrangement. So, take the same melody take the same ORF arrangement that there is for song number 18, Falling Leaves. And you can see with the kids' demos and the number that we have of the kids' demos, this is a very successful song for second grade. But change the words now for winter. It would be even more fun if you could get your own students to write new words for it. And I think this is, um, in our current multicultural society, I think writing words that are very non-specific to any one holiday is probably better than having everything that's geared to Christmas so that we have some Hanukkah, we have some that are about snow, we have some that are about bells and they're not specific. So in grade three, I looked at the song, um, shake that tree, do oh do, shake that tree, do oh do, and it just is kind of a no brainer to go. Shake the bells, do oh do, shake the bells, do oh do, shake the bells, do oh do, 
on a holiday and again it's non non-specific and i believe there is an orf arrangement for that piece that you can find on the site I should maybe check, but I won't take the time to check right this minute. Um, grade four, there is an ORF arrangement, I am positive, for Pass the Pumpkin. And the idea with this song always was, in my head anyways, we change it for whatever holiday we're in. So pass a pumpkin round the room, keep the beat while passing. When it stops, you take a turn, clap it if you can. So that's what you do at Halloween is pass the pumpkin or in October. At Christmas, pass a stocking round the room, keep the beat while passing. So you'd put your rhythm cards into a stocking and pass them around. And when the child chooses a rhythm, they start the beginning of a rhythm chain. Now, I got a little more creative for the clock round. I love this round. It's in grade four. I've done it really successfully. In fact, one of my groups is the kids demo for this. So the song goes, big clocks tick so slowly, tick, tock, tick, tock, change clocks to bells and you've got a Christmas piece. Big bells ring so slowly, ting-a-ling-a, -a. little bells ring faster, ting-a-ling-a, ting-a-ling-a, Jingles on the sleigh ring faster. Ting a ling a ting a ling a ting a ling a ting. Let's take a look at clock round and you can see um, why I love this piece. So I'm just going to go to song list, remove all the filters, and look for clock round. And it's right here, number 44 in grade four. And here's the movement that my children's choir made up for it. So they're doing step, close. And then on the little, they turn and go this way on tiptoe. And on... And those were not students laying on the floor. Those were siblings come to watch the end of the rehearsal. So what we did with this, I'll pull up the concept slide. So the movement for this, I'm going to push away and I hope you stand up and join me. So big clocks tick so slowly or big bells ring so slowly, ting, a, uh, ling, a. Uh. And all we did was step to the right with the right foot, close, step, close. And it's a big movement so that it represents the big bells. And then little bells tick faster or ring faster, ting-a-ling-a, ting-a-ling-a. Then we go on tiptoe in the other direction. Little clock, uh, little bells little bells ring faster ting a ling a ting a ling a and then watches on your wrist tick faster um jingles on the sleigh ring faster so shake jingles on the sleigh ring faster ting a ling a ting a ling a ting a ling a ting and it would really be fun to do this with bells in hand Jingles on the sleigh ring faster. Ting a ling a ting a ling a ting a ling a ting. So we would actually play the rhythm, do the movement, but it turns clock round now into something that you could actually, I, I would think it would be lovely doing it in a performance. I did it in three separate circles. You could do it um, in circles within a circle, however it works for your performance. And the ORF arrangement is here. So if you choose to teach it with the ORF instruments, I find at least having the bass part there keeps the kids from rushing the 16s. So I find adding the bass part, even if that's as far as you get with the ORF arrangement, it's really, really helpful to do it for that particular song. Um, because it does it keeps them from keeps them from rushing 
Okay, so that was grade four. Grade five, we have the song Winter is Here, which again is a nice winter song. Middle school, we have Il et Ne, and I have Serge on with me who could teach us a French pronunciation if we had lots of time. But we looked at this song not long ago and decided that the singer did a pretty good job of the pronunciation. And what you can do for teaching the French is just play a little bit, have the kids sing it back. Pause, have the kids sing back. Um, if it's going too fast, go over to the slow downer and slow it down and that also will help. But this is a, a beautiful French carol and Again, it's got a beautiful ORF arrangement. I looked at this again today to review to make sure that it's doable. I actually think this would be, uh, um, even if, if you can't play, uh, if you can't sing, this would actually be a good piece to play. I have to put my bars back on my ORF instrument because I took them all off. So there's my G back in place, my F back in place. My C, I'm going to leave my C off because I'm not going to use it. So if I use my mallets, oh, I need my B. There's my B. Okay. There's supposed to be an F sharp here, but I don't have an F sharp handy. Um, so I'm just gonna simplify and leave out that F sharp. And then if I look at the next part of this, If I can sight read that, your students can learn it with practice. And the other parts are challenging, but this is not intended for second grade. This is intended for fifth or sixth grade, and it would be an awesome challenge piece to teach them. Uh, I, I think actually it would work really well on recorders as well, if you're allowed to play. So I, I think this is a great challenge piece for older students um, and it's, it's part of the song list. So that is my song list pieces. In the Happy Holidays unit, we have additional ORF arrangements and some of these are quite lovely. They're all, um, there's a range of, of abilities. So go into units go into festivals and holidays. You actually don't have to. It's easy enough to find. And happy holidays is right here. And this unit is probably, we're gonna probably split it into three sections B after, after this holiday season, because it's so big. There's so much, uh, so many possible activities. If you do a caroling with your school, um, Th these caroling videos are great. You can project, they've got the words, and there's one with more traditional, there's one with a little less traditional. And concept slides for each of those pieces. These are solfa and rhythm activities, interactive activities, and cute little worksheet type things. There's a whole bunch of Jingle Bells activities and a little note as well. There's a, an about the song on Jingle Bells because we're learning more about that song now than we used to know. And it does have a history that you should be aware of before you use it. And then we come to our holiday ORF arrangements. So here are the bells, holiday magic, penguins marching, winter is here. Totally not holiday specific. Um, and these are all really simple. Um, I remember well the day that I wrote these. I was driving from Toronto Airport to Hamilton for 
a conference. I think it was the Ontario Music Educators Conference. And I got stuck in traffic and I was just going nuts. And I took the voice recorder on my phone. And while I'm stuck there, I'm think, singing, hear the bells ring, ring, ting-a-ling, ting, ting-a-ling, hear the bells ring this holiday. And I wrote all those songs sitting in the car on that stupid 401 stuck in traffic. And um, then I wrote the parts after. And the parts, again, um, this is a level Bordune. So I would teach the bass this way. And then I would teach the soprano parts this way. So the bass part is the C and the G. I need my C on now. Of course I do. And then the sopranos play an octave higher. parts as much as you can. Hear the bells ring. There's the sleigh bell part. And you can tell them the sleigh bells play every time you have the word ring. Hear the bells ring. Ting, ting, a ling, ting, ting, a ling. Hear the bells ring this holiday. And what I would teach the, the glockenspiel players is that they fill in after the sleigh bells start. Hear the bells ring. Ring, ting-a-ling, ting, ting-a-ling. Hear the bells ring this holiday. So that piece is easy. Um, I wanted another piece in 3-4 because we don't do enough in 3-4 with our kids. So that's a good one. Holiday magic fills the air. Again, you can do this uh, We've put down here upper elementary, but you could simplify, do it for your lower if you want. We've got some scarf ideas for this one. And then the ORF arrangement. Holiday magic fills the air. Holiday magic everywhere. Filling our hearts with love and joy. Something special for each girl and boy. And the parts aren't terribly diff difficult. We do have an optional recorder part, again, if you're able to play. And it's intended to either be an interlude that's a little different than the other parts, or you get the kids to improvise. So just have them uh, make up a recorder part. And if you have been teaching recorder, there's a great opportunity to show it off in a holiday concert. Uh, Penguins Marching, one where you can make up different movements for your students. And this is definitely intended for our littles, for our kindergarten to grade twos. And you can see by the Bordoon, it's just play play it's really easy for them and you can add the hand drum part in if you've got some really sharp kids and I might add words to this as well um, wins. they don't fly they don't fly they don't fly but this is one where I would make up bazillion verses and I'd have a group do movement to to the piece as well. Um, winter is here. And this one, again, I want kids making up verses. Winter is here. Winter is here. Let's go sledding because winter is here. But it could be let's go skating. And then you could have movement improv in the middle as a section. Let's go. Um, Let's throw snowballs, and you could have a pretend snowball fight in the middle of that. Kids love those pretend snowballs. Let's play hockey, have a pretend hockey game. Um, whatever you do in the winter where you are. I was, um, I'm in Edmonton right now, not in Me Mexico this week, and um, I had to drive up 
today for appointments that we have tomorrow because there's a snowstorm predicted tonight and so we're trying to get ahead of the weather uh, so winter is here in alberta most definitely now these two orf arrangements i just added before the session so those of you who are on the session get first glimpse so sing noel we had a group of us try this out and at first glance we looked at it and we go this is impossible this is just not possible but because there's so much repetition in this song it is doable and after we kind of had the hang of it we're going hey this is really fun so we had among us three music grads and no we had two music grads in our group that was testing it out. We had a grade seven student who is taking band, but he is only in grade seven. And then we had, I think Serge, you helped us with this too. And Serge hasn't played since high school, which is a little, a few years ago. And, and it was fun. We really enjoyed the playing of this. I don't think we had enough people to do all the parts, but again, start with the bass. And once you have the bass line down, then you can fill in. The bass line and this line were quite easy. And then you can do this line with your voices or you could do it with a recorder. So I think you will enjoy Sing Noel or for arrangement. It's a challenge piece for your uppers. Another challenge piece, and this is brand new, and this is Carol of the Bells. And this one is quite lovely again and the first part is quite easy this part is still pretty easy this part is still quite quite doable and quite playable and then you get to this part this is going to be the hard part so if you're modifying for the needs of your group i would say don't play page four just do the first three pages and if your group is up for a challenge have them play it but if not so you can do it on recorder it could be played on uh, xylophones and glockenspiels but it's going to take some good players to do it uh, I find it challenging enough, but you know what? It's it's good for us to get a challenge. So it's it's doable, and I'm quite certain that if I practiced and I was motivated, I would get it. And all parts basically get to play this. You would obviously put your stronger kids on these instruments, and your kids that are a little more challenged, put them on the finger symbol parts. Um, sometimes with finger symbols, they're supposed to be played like this. But sometimes if I have wee little ones that are having troubles, I give them a mallet and they play the finger symbol with a mallet and that simplifies it. So those are what's available on Music Play Online. And there's this big variety of ages and abilities and lots of options that are Christmas, that are winter, that are snow, that are Hanukkah, that are um, that you can do in any school. So, uh, do we have any questions, Denise? Uh, yeah, we actually just have a single question at the moment. Okay. Uh, can you show us how to get to the ORF arrangements again through the Discover feature? I was using the song list and I will show you again. Oh, for sure. Sorry. Yes. I was using the song list. Um, okay. So I'm on the website and I need to go over to, I was using the song list. The discover feature is good for finding um, the ORF arrangements in units, but with the song list, it's this filter that I can add that will let me search out all the ORF arrangements. I have to scroll down to the end of it to directory and then from my options I choose ORF and then I can choose whichever grade level I'm looking for and of course you can cross grades I can do a grade two arrangement with grade threes 
or often with grade ones. And so then if I select ORF, I can see my entire year's ORF arrangements for grade two. And I love this feature that Carrie Lynn and Nathan built, giving us the tone sets and giving us the rhythms because I can see, okay, there's half notes, there's half notes. Half notes are new in grade two. I'm definitely going to use these ones. Okay, are there any other questions while I'm here? Yeah, um, we have another one about, or two rather, about the handout. Would you be able to show us where to get the handout? The updated one with your new uh, words was just re-uploaded by me. Um, okay, so we'll go up to the dashboard and go into webinars. And this one is holiday or arrangements for classroom or performance. So here is what will be up on YouTube. And here is the handout. Here's the PD certificate. And you can sign up for the newsletters. And we have two more coming um, between now and Christmas. We have the concert etiquette wrap and some holiday concert ideas for those who haven't done them already. And um, fun activities to do after the holiday concert will be our last one. And then in January, we are very likely to be shifting from one a week to one a month and some extra ones if it's a month where there seems to be lots of new things coming up. Awesome. Um, follow up with the handout. Could you just show us where the new uh, words for the songs are listed? Falling Leaves was requested in particular, but. Okay, so handout is here and here's the new words. And you changed it already, Denise. Nice <laughs> job. So soft and fluffy white, falling in the night, winter snow is falling in the starry light. And you know what? It would be easier for the kids if you just kept night in both because white, night, light is going to be hard for them to remember which comes where. So you rewrite it however you like, um, but you can certainly start with mine. And actually, I think this is quite fun to do um, new words for pieces. And I think that's a good way to make use of things that the kids have already learned and and build on it because lots of your kids will have done falling leaves already okay any other questions today yes uh this is a general music play online question can you show how to add uh to my list okay so i'm going to create a my list i'm going to add a new one and i'm going to say wednesday webinar and I'm going to make that list. So now I get started by going to a song and adding it. So I'm going to go to the song list and I'm going to find Falling Leaves. And I'm going to add the kids, nah, well, I'll add something. I'll add the um, concept slides to my list. And so I click there and then I um, concept slide, falling leaves, and now it's added to my list. If I want to use this before I go away, I just click here and it goes away. But now when I go to my list and I open up my Wednesday webinar, I've got my concept slide. And when I click here, I go right to it. I can add anything to this. I can go into the games. And this is our newest game, Space Music Adventure. If you haven't played it yet with your kids, do because it's lots of fun. And there's lots of possible areas that you can work with them. Um, so I'm going to go to note naming CDEFG. And I've gone this far. I have to show you how to play it. We're going to get fuel so we get to a planet by naming correctly the notes so that's an E and this is an F and this is a C and this is a D e, and this is a G e, 
And look at this, now I'm gonna blast off and get my fuel. I think this is so fun. I've got a video of my granddaughter playing this for about half an hour. So add it to my list, add it to the Wednesday webinar, and I'm gonna call it the Space Game CDEFG. Add it to the list and it's added. So I can add games, I can add listening, I can add anything to the my lists. It's wonderful. Okay, any more questions today? Um, it looks like that is all of the questions. Oh, never mind. We've got one more. Um, okay. Do we have an alternative way or alternative ideas uh, to play instruments uh, for younger Ks and primaries? For example, finger symbols. Um, well, my finger symbol alternative is to hit it with a mallet. I mean, that that works really well. The, the triangle, the modification I've used is to hold it with a pipe cleaner. And if you don't have beaters, use the mallet. This, this little wooden mallet, I think it was 50 cents. And I think I bought it from West Music a um, long time ago. And it really works well. With the little ones um, and instruments, the biggest tip that I can give you is the play the instruments quickly poem. It's in music play pre-K. And it's around song number nine. Play the instruments quickly. And oh, we have a concept slide now. Let's see here. Play the instruments quickly, quickly, quickly. Play the instruments quickly, quickly stop. Play the instrument slowly, slowly, slowly. Play the instrument slowly, slowly stop. And of course, the kids all have those instruments in their hands. And just by reflex, they copy what I'm doing. And so they're getting quickly, they're getting slowly, they're getting stop, and then they stop playing. And you can see a kid's demo here of kids doing this and they're funny they they love this to them this is another game i hope this is not and too jittery <laughs> Look at that. I mean, they're so engaged with the activity. They, they love that. And that I think is my very, very best tip for using instruments with your little people. Do this poem and do it every time you give instruments out. And it just, it, I mean, what, what, do you, what do kids wanna do when they get an instrument in their hand? Hey, I wanna try it out. That's just natural and normal for kids. So I get them to try it out with my little poem. And then they have the, the tryout done and they're they're good to go. All right, we have a couple more. Um, to teach melody lines on xylophones, do you project notes up on a smart board? Do you model? Do you get them to memorize? This is um, specifically for middle school. I, I would say all of the above. Um, it's it depends on the level of difficulty of the melody. But if it's middle school, I absolutely would want to have notes projected because I'd want them reading. Um, I sometimes I call it rote note. So for example, if I was doing that um, hard bit in some festivals and holidays, I can find it faster if I don't do this, but this way you'll get to see where it is again. Happy holidays. I think it was the third chunk down was our ORF arrangements. Let's look at Carol of the Bells. So if I was to project this, I can make it bigger. And then absolutely, I would have the kids uh, probably sing and sign the notes. So what key are we in here? I'm not even sure. We don't have a key signature. So I think we're in A minor. If we're in E minor, we're missing a key signature. So. So I think I would have the kids sing the pitch letter names, A, G, F, E, 
find them on their instruments and a good way to play first when you're teaching these is to have them play with their fingertips. A, G, F, E, and then it's not so loud. And then, okay, let's try it with the mallets. And of course, one of the hardest things, and of course I lost one of my mallets, is to get them to use proper changing mallets. I should be going right, left, right, left. But I bet 95% of the time you see the kids doing it one-handed and not alternating hands. So lots of uh, sing pitch letter names, model, practice with the fingertips, and then practice the sticking because that is something that your kids are gonna struggle with. It's, everybody does. Okay, more questions. These are really good questions today. Yeah, um, actually this is just so we can have it covered. Um, would you be able to show again the triangle with the wooden mallet and um, stop sharing your screen? It looks like someone was having a little bit of tech issue just so we can have it covered, make sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is um, pipe cleaner that I twisted on. And so this is an actual triangle beater. And if I was going to do a roll, that's how I would do it. I'm not going to do roll with a mallet, but with the mallet, it's not quite as pleasant to sound, but it works. And I think I do like the triangle beater better. But again, you do what you, what you can with the instruments that you have. What I have found is, especially my little guys, doing this, seems to be a harder skill to master. And so for on the finger symbols, this for sure works better up to about grade two. And then from grade three and on, I would expect them to be able to do this. But I have to say, I've seen lots of teachers in workshops and I don't wanna embarrass anybody by naming names, but they put their fingers in here and that's never what is intended. It's intended that you hold it like that and hold it on the elastic. So. Yes, playing, playing those instruments correctly takes, takes some practice and some skill. All right, perfect. I think that is all of the questions. Okay, well, I am really glad we got to do this today. I was a little worried with that snowstorm blowing in. Um, winter is definitely here in Alberta for sure, and I'm sure wherever you are. Um, and I hope you have a great week, and I hope this has given you some fun lesson ideas for December with your students. Bye everybody.